Welcome all you greedy murder hobos and sexually aggressive bards. This is Fails and Flails, a channel about all things tabletop roleplay gaming, but especially Dungeons and Dragons because we love it that much. Today in this video we're going to be talking about when I was playing Dungeons and Dragons with a group of football players. And I can guarantee you, yes, it got out of hand many, many times. For instance, on our very first session we had to st keep stopping so they could run outside and start shotgunning beers. Now I think you have an idea of what we're getting into. Also, make sure to leave a comment down below of some of your own rather interesting or unique experiences you had with Dungeons and & Dragons. And with that, let's get rolling. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. So this was back when I was in college, and yes, I was playing football too, so I might be a little biased, but I'll try to keep that out of the story. Anyway, so I wasn't having much luck finding a D&D group, and I decided to ask around the football team, and surprisingly enough, uh, there was about four other guys who were interested in playing, and uh, so we kind of set up a time. I had the Lost Minds of Fandelver set, and uh, we just went for it. Not sure if this is relevant, but all of us were either O-line or D-line, meaning we are all pretty fat guys. Uh, don't know if that says anything about heavier people, but I was one of them, so, you know, I can't be uh, prejudiced against it, right? Right? We got to the first session, and of course, nobody except for a single player had their character she created, so we spent the first hour and a half, possibly two hours, uh, of the session going through and making every single person's character. It didn't help that we only had one player's handbook, and so we basically had to do it one person at a time, which definitely didn't help things out. A couple of the football players also showed up with a 30 rack of bush light and a small bottle of fireball. And uh, I'm not saying anybody was underage, but, uh, you know, they probably would have been carded. So things finally get rolling. Uh, everything's going pretty clunky because it was literally the first time I've ever DM'd. It was the first time everybody else had ever played. But, you know, we're getting into it. We're having a good time. They managed to clear out the goblins in the uh, cave. If you don't know about the Lost Mines of Handelver, it basically starts off with being ambushed by a group of goblins. And then the party is basically supposed to follow them back to the cave and rescue, um, oh gosh, what's his name from him, and then uh, he kind of helps usher in the next phase of the campaign. I discovered pretty quickly that everybody in this group were all murder hobos, uh, except for one guy. It was a, aside from the five of us football players, it was also a 38-year-old man we were playing with, and that's kind of a story for another day, or just a story that we ignore altogether. Uh, but he was the only one person who wasn't a murder hobo. He was playing a druid. Uh, actually a cool guy, but we're just going to leave him out of the story for brevity's sake. Again, if you don't know Lost Minds of Fandelver, right inside the entrance there are a couple of wolves which you can very easily befriend, either with animal handling or even just giving them food, which the druid does, and uh, manages to, to calm the wolves and allow this, the party to pass. And of course, with that opportunity, the rest of the party goes and kills the wolves because experience means they get a level up. Also, because it's their first campaign, and first session, they decide that they need to kill everything. I very quickly recognize that this could lead to a whole lot of issues in the near future if they decide to take out this newfound bloodlust on the uh, commoners in town, uh, but because considering this was my very first time as a DM, I uh, literally had no idea what to do, so I basically just winged it and prayed to God that they didn't do anything stupid. During their short adventure into the cave, somebody happened to roll the very first nat 1 of the session, uh, which was ruled by everybody else at the table to basically be forced to chug a beer. And this turned out to be the precursors to Drinking in Dragons, which we developed uh, several months later as we continued playing, uh, surprisingly enough, with the same group. And uh, we ended up having a whole long list of uh, rules for Drinking in Dragons, which obviously turned future sessions into uh, basically shit shows <laughs> because uh, basically for doing bad and doing well, you got punished no matter what. Well, punished as in you had to drink. Essentially, you rolled a 1, well, that's a beer. You rolled a 20, well, that's a shot. And so on along those lines. Uh, nonetheless, you can probably guess that things, yeah, just got pretty uh, uncontrollable. <laughs> The first session ended with one of the players uh, beginning to puke. Uh, luckily he didn't get it on the table or the dice or anything else. He managed to get outside in time. Uh, however, it was a pretty clear sign at that point that we should probably call it. And uh, me being the only sober one basically drove everybody back home and made sure they actually got into their bed safe and most of them had a bucket near them after that. 
Uh, the next session went not too much different from that. Uh, however, maybe about halfway through, one of the players uh, was pretty inebriated at one point, and um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, he had like missed out. He was like in a different location when the rest of the party was doing something, and they basically didn't cut him in on a portion of gold for some reward, or they uh, managed to get more gold than they initially were offered, but they only gave him his portion for what was initially offered, not his portion of what they actually got. And uh, obviously his character wouldn't know this, but his player very clearly did, and uh, he didn't seem to let it go at all. Uh, his, I basically said his character was kind of suspicious of the other, uh, basically one guy in particular. It was a barbarian who was suspicious of the fighter, and uh, his character just won't let it go. So, you know, I had the barbarian roll insight, the fighter roll uh, persuasion, and the fighter drastically uh, outrolls him, so there's like no way that the barbarian should have any idea. But uh, yet, because probably because he was a little bit inebriated at end, also he knew in person that he had been, you know, kind of cut short on this deal. He continued like pushing it, uh, the topic, and uh, kind of tr starting to bully the fighter a little bit until he actually attacked him. Um, and then it got into like a PV v P PvP thing. And uh, it all just got out of hand because everybody else jumped in and it kind of turned into a free-for-all because somebody rolled a one and accidentally hit somebody else, which means obviously he had to take a drink and the other person was already a little bit drunk and so they had, uh, you know, they were upset about it so they attacked that person back. And the more I think about it, this isn't really a video about uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons with football players. It's more about playing Dungeons and Dragons with a bunch of drunk people. Which maybe that would be more interesting. I don't, I don't know. I got plenty of these stories. Do not get me wrong. Um, but I, I know in a previous video or in a comment, somebody mentioned that it would be interesting hearing about playing with football players. Uh, but the truth is, football players are really just kind of drunks. Or at least the ones that I knew. Or maybe it was just my college. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> we ended up losing uh, the one guy who was 38 years old because of uh, basically the football schedules were uh, kind of busy. And so we weren't really able to find times that worked for both us and him, so we ended up losing him, but we actually got a few other football players uh, until our group was about nine people, at which point, um, and I was DMing for all of them, but uh, we ended up basically breaking it down where uh, we'd meet twice a week, where, you know, the half of people who could meet this week would, or at this day would meet at that day and time, and the people who could meet at this day and time would, you know, meet then. So obviously there was a little bit overlap where some people were showing up to both sessions, and but at least uh, somebody was showing up to one session every week. And uh, yeah, I did, we did end up rolling, running one session, which was nine people, and uh, never again, never again. It was truly terrible. And uh, we actually got like one of the study rooms in the library, like the biggest one. And so, you know, I was at the head of the table and we have everybody like lined up around it. And uh, yeah, just to get through one round of combat took like 10, 15 minutes. It didn't help that everybody was still pretty inexperienced, so they won't think about what they were going to do on their turn until it was their turn. And so every time it came to the next person, he'd be like, what? Okay, what's going on? And I'd have to explain what's going on. He's like, uh, okay, can I do this? And I'm like, sure. Or can I do this? And I'm like, no, but you could maybe do this. And uh, yeah, it really kind of slowed, slowed things down. And um, yeah, I would not recommend it, especially if you're new to Dungeons and & Dragons, and especially if you're DMing keep the group small, like four or five is perfect, but once you get up into like close to double digits, it, it, it melts and breaks down pretty fast. Overall, things were actually pretty fun. Not every session uh, devolved into, you know, drunken bickering and arguing. Uh, those were just kind of the times that stood out the most to me because of how chaotic it was. There was one time an actual fight broke out when people were sober, um, which obviously, you know, we broke up pretty fast. There wasn't really like many punches thrown it was kind of more like wrestling like grappling i'd say uh nonetheless like we all hopped in to break it up as soon as we could because uh you know you know in-game problems shouldn't you know come to out of game problems you know keep it in game or you know just solve it like gentlemen i don't know uh nonetheless like i said uh that group uh you know of football players basically ended up playing for the last two years of college uh, I'm pretty sure those who are still there are still playing because uh, before I left, I set up a Dungeons & Dragons club to try to get like more people into it. And uh, surprisingly, we got, 
like maybe 10 or 12 people while I was there. And that was just maybe in the last semester of college. Uh, but it was a fun group. You know, I had a lot of memories from there. And obviously because it was my very first group that I was DMing for, uh, was, you know, some unique encounters, a whole lot of mistakes, a whole lot of, uh, dare I say, fuck ups and uh, a lot of good memories. However, I am going to cut the video there just to make sure that it's not too long and so that I can get it out and uh, edit it and, you know, publish to YouTube for all of you amazing people to enjoy. So once again, this is Fails and Flails, channel for all things gaming. And uh, again, make sure to hit like and subscribe, share the video with your friends, maybe uh, some football player friends of yours, and uh, leave a comment down below of some of your own interesting experiences playing Dungeons & Dragons. That's all I've got, so you guys have an amazing day.